Welcome to this episode of Beers and Bites with your co-hosts, Chris Jordan and Jeremy Murdishaw. This evening, we're going to go totally 180 degrees out of sync with what we've been doing in terms of interviewing IT-related folks. We actually have with us tonight Chris Suarez, who is the general manager from the Beer Chase Brewery. Now, imagine being, I believe it's called Loudoun County in Virginia at the base or at the ridge of the mountains there, right? Beautiful mountains and a nice spawning 35-acre estate where you not only have to go visit them, right, and get to enjoy the fine beers that they have there, but you get to also enjoy the farming atmosphere that they use to move and produce the product. So with that, uh, why don't we start off tonight, Mr. Jordan, if you can show your beer. Sure, I got two, like always. Uh, we're going to try the Aspen one. This is uh, a tripe beer, which I think they mean triple beer, you know, uh, local being low land beer. Um, we'll try it out. I've never tried this beer company before. I'm, I'm more of a Loudon and kind of guy. Every, no, I do triple notch every once in a while. And then I'm going to try the Old Ox Brewery with some hoppy plays. So this is, uh, I think I did face plant before. Um, but this time I'm going to try with the hoppy place and, and we'll move from there. Jeremy, you got some interesting facts. Why don't you go with your next one? So as I am uh, drinking my way through the Golden State, uh, I've got the Golden Road, uh, Golden State Cerveza. So this is their uh, brewed in California Mexican lager. And then and a tried and true friend of mine, Mr. Guinness, mostly because I read an article that... <laughs> Um, it states that uh, beer fights cancer. And I spent a lot of time in my youth smoking, so I'm trying to do anything that's going to prevent it <laughs> happening in the future. Well, you remember uh, Chris Roberts from a, a previous episode where he said beer isn't beer, right? He's from uh, the UK, Chris. So he said beer isn't beer unless I can stick a fork in it and it stands up, right? That's how he, he likes his, uh, his beer. But he's with drinking, that, Chris, he's, he's drinking molasses. He's not drinking beer. <laughs> well, hold on. I got a couple, a couple interesting facts for you on the on the beer fights cancer front. So, reason number one, it kills free radicals in your blood plasma. If you don't know what that is, like I don't, just Google it. Um, it's full of B vitamins, which is amazing, right? B gives you energy, and then it has a bunch of stuff that I can't pronounce that uh, also. AIDS in, the, in your body's ability to fight cancer. So in other words, what we're doing here and the, the fine quality products that uh, Mr. Suarez produces will help you fight cancer. And here I thought it gave you a longer life because it helps you reduce the stress that you're under currently, right? Well, that, that helps that you too. get relaxed. Okay. <laughs> well, we be Chris. <laughs> Chris, what did you bring us this evening? Uh, today I have our evening sunset. It is a uh, um, West Coast IPA. It is absolutely delicious, um, and it's one of my go-tos uh, when it's on tap. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, uh, as I get uh, reminded quite often, yes, I did buy a case of this Alaskan beer at uh, because where I live out in the country, right, I don't have access to liquor stores like you people in the urban areas do. So uh, with that, I have, again, my standby with the Alaskan uh, Icy Bay uh, IPA. They all need right. to start sponsoring us because <laughs> all you do is drink their beer. <laughs> you know, for all we know, Jeremy, we are being sponsored. He's pocketing the money. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> all right. So listen, uh, Chris, please yeah. talk a little bit about, I mean, I've read a little bit about you've been in the hospitality business for quite some time, right, in and this whole journey that brought you to uh, the brewery and this the, the notion of, of how and why from a, a local perspective, it makes a lot of difference in the community and such. I'll, I'll let you start with that, please. Yeah, so um, my background is hospitality. And that's one thing that I, I really think that uh, what I bring to for Bear Chase was a benefit as a whole. Um, and we... We had a we brought in a great brewer. We brought in a uh, great property manager to make sure we have the uh, top everything running great. Um, and then I came in to bring in the service side of things and really elevate what uh, Bear Chase offers and how we offer it. Um, and since then, we've been definitely gotten very involved into the local associations, uh, bed and breakfast, and also the um, brewery association. 
Um, and the reason I mentioned the bed and breakfast is because we do have a manor on, on site as well, uh, as well. So you can actually stay on uh, property um, in a um, 14 person vacation home with an indoor pool, sauna, fitness center, and plenty of, plenty of space. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and, and so it's a great little location and to be able to have that um, and the views are absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, but yeah, we are located on 35 acres. Uh, we sit and look yeah, over Lattie exactly. County's Valley. Um, um, and so we kind of see all, everything east of us. Um, and so on a clear day, I say we actually can see Tyson's from our uh, backyard. Uh, and so, uh, it is absolutely a very, very, um, gorgeous view as a whole. Uh, did I answer all those questions, the, that question as a whole? It, it did, but now I have a follow-up real quick. So being on the, the ability to see the, the east side of the mountain there, does mm -hmm. that help protect you from the storms that are coming in from California heading in your direction? Um, not really. I mean, it's just uh, once it hits that, it's uh, so uh, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of something called Mount Weather. Uh, Mount Weather is uh, the little um, government base slash uh, NATO, or I'm sorry, uh, Little. Um, uh, <laughs> no, it's FEMA. They do FEMA. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Uh, it's FEMA up there now. Is the uh, up that way? Um, but it is so well named Mount Weather because our weather patterns change every which way. The wind can come east, west. Uh, Sometimes I think it comes straight down on top of us. Um, so it is all over the place. But yeah, no, we don't get any protection being on that ridge facing just east. Okay. So let's. I'm going to go back and explore one other thing real quick before the guys jump in. Now, as you talk about your local environment, right, you, you said mm -hmm. your community, is your distribution really just limited to that, that local community or, or talk a little bit about your distribution, if you would? Um, well, it's, that would be a, it's going to be a real short conversation. We actually have almost zero uh, distribution. Um, being a farm brewery, we're a destination brewery. Um, pretty much 98% of everything we make stays and is sold on site. Um, and so we do have, we have, you know, a couple of handles that we do sell out to, um, different local bars and restaurants, but we really are, most of our, um, our revenue and our beers is sold through the, uh, the tasting room itself. Okay. Um, and so, um, uh, we don't have much to show, but as far as the community goes, we do, we are very active in the local community, um, and to work with different charities and different organizations in that way. Yeah, wow. Al, you don't understand it. We don't have a Disney World here. We have loud well, that's, beers. That's, that's, Jeremy, <laughs> that's Jeremy in California, right? Now, Texas, we have a lot of local microbreweries here as well. Yeah, so, so we, we, we have everything from trampoline and kid sets to some of these places. It's like the Duff, it's like Simpsons episode. <laughs> um, now, you guys have a beautiful scenery, Chris. You guys... I'm going to jump in and then Jeremy's going to bring stuff. You, so you guys went through the igloo experiment. Um, I know a bunch yes. of the places did it. How did that go for you? You had about five igloos or more? Or We we actually bought seven. We only put up four because they came in so late this season. Um, we really kind of missed the boat um, because it was on the slow boat. From we, uh, we, ordered, we ended up ordering it from China, getting our igloos that way, and they took a lot longer than expected. And so we were very late to the game. But when we did put them up, uh, we got a lot of – um, I guess we're excited about it to have that little bit of extra protection to be able to enjoy the outside um, and not get beat up by the wind that we get up on the mountain. That's true too. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. I, I noticed everybody takes the igloos first uh, out there. It's first come first serve. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so it is. I, I don't have to deal with inclement weather. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but you do. Well, you're when, when you say igloo, do you mean a literal igloo or is it some it's a plastic dome? Tent? Yeah, okay. it, it looks like a uh, the jungle gym you would climb on with when you were a kid at a school playground, and then you put a plastic see-through vinyl on it. Okay, and that so was our answer uh, on the East Coast for 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 separation drinking. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you there's a lot of different versions. What's that? You just, they just had to deliver. They just had to deliver it here. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, it's a uh, big difference from being in a city versus out in the country. Uh, and so uh, big, big difference uh, on that one. I wish we we, we tried delivery uh, during the shutdown. We uh, we were trying uh, pickup locations. Uh, but uh, it, the again, the easiest was on site, having everyone come to us. Yeah. And did, did COVID, how did COVID impact you? And if, if you had a surplus of beer, how did you get rid of it? Uh, 
Uh, we ended up, uh, on, so big, big change in everything, uh, everything we did. Uh, so I'm used to tons of people on site. We were shut down for uh, about three months where we didn't have, weren't allowed to sell, have um, guests be on site consumption um, other than basically buy and go. And so we turned uh, our crawler machine, our growler machine. Uh, we had uh, the team just filling as much of those vessels as we possibly could. And then we, um, as soon as um, COVID kind of came in, we actually turned our 90% of our production into cans. And so we started, we brought in a mobile canning unit. And so they would come up and set up our, on our uh, brew house and we would bottle off or keg off, I'm sorry, can off, uh, you know, 20 or 15 to 20 barrels of beer at a time. And just to be able to have it packaged and get it out the door as quick as possible. But as soon as COVID kind of the quarantine ended, that aspect really went away of the the necessity to have it because everyone wanted to come back out and be outside. Um, again, we're a very large venue, so we have a lot of room to spread out. Um, my team and myself, we worked with, directly with the health department and to ensure what the requirements were to have everyone in a safe environment. Uh, we had the first round, we literally had, we painted circles in the in our yard on the grass. Um, and we're like, all right, that's your, that's your space you can be in. Otherwise, you cannot be anywhere else outside of that. Um, and then we kept on expanding and growing um, and working with our local uh, agencies to make sure we were on the right side. But we have had so many people, the influx of guests that were stuck in their houses from D.C. to um, Baltimore, uh, Mar areas, Maryland, West Virginia, that were able to get out and enjoy a space with freedom. So we saw a huge change in our environment again, back to on-site consumption. Um, and so it was, it's definitely was a roller coaster of time trying to figure out how to do it safely and effectively um, with all of that. We went down from staff of, I had uh, in March last year, I had about probably about 75, I went down to four. I'm sorry, I went down to 14. And then it went back up, went back up to about 80, p and 80 employees uh, immediately. So it was lots of fun. Wow. So, so the same people people that was why I went like that first. So, well, I'm sorry, what's that? Did you get some of the same people back or did you end up with yeah, the new we staff? Yeah, we, we uh, brought in almost everyone we lost. Everyone came back. Um, and so we let individuals that didn't feel comfortable uh, take extra time. But uh, we hired on additional staff because of cleanliness. And um, we actually, we actually being outdoors, we opened up a total of seven serving stations for our guests to be able to eat, stay outside, which means wow. additional bartenders on, additional servers, like barbacks, and everyone else to kind of get the, uh, make sure we're able to service everything properly. And now, I, I, I imagine that you've got a, a lot of pent up demand still happening, especially as people get their immunization passports, right? And uh, yes. now, do you require people to have a passport to come visit or, or how do you practice with that? No, uh, so our requirements are indoors is still a mask in the state. Um, and then we, again, it's all outdoors. And once you're there outdoors, uh, they can take the mask off and in their individual areas. Um, but all indoor, all serving areas, all we have additional porta potties. Um, so there's a lot of outdoor uh, bathroom access to avoid any congestion areas. And um, so we've, again, we've really changed who we were. Um, and I think we've adapted, the, or not adapted, but adopted the model pretty well to stick moving forward. Nice, and, and with you, as you look forward, uh, I imagine that the booking, right, for staying at your, your facility, mm -hmm. probably is starting to get extended quite a bit. So, you know, if you're trying to book a trip, you may have to think months ahead now in order to book, or, or are you guys still have a lot of availability? We, uh, being such a large place, we are actually first come first serve. Uh, we don't take reservations for the brewery itself. Um, and so uh, being that uh, so large and just the flow, um, we are able to, once our parking lot kind of fills, it's, that's when we, are, we kind of max our capacity. Um, but as the um, progression changes, we're working with uh, different tour buses to be able to bring guests in and, and everything. But, um, we do have uh, limited capacity due to, or due to our parking safe spaces that we have right now. Um, but if we're able to, ever able to expand that, we'll be able to offer more. But um, as we continue to develop into this this season of vaccinations and um, the warmer weather, 
you know, everyone is enjoying just being on the outside there and they take advantage of that and kind of run with that one. Yeah. Al, I told you, I'm serious. It's like Disneyland here when it comes to drinking. We, we, <laughs> this is, it, it tour, he brought up the tour buses. We do have drinking buses. We've got wow, like wow. everything. This is, wow. this is a professional. This is a, if, if there are esports in, in Korea, we, we are a drinking sport here in Loudoun County. <laughs> well, that, that, then that brings me to the next question, and I don't want to dominate here, but I'm intrigued because I went to your website and started trying to count the different variations of beer, and I think it's easier for me to really just ask you because it sounds like the sampling, you're going to walk away going, wow. You know, I, yeah. I might not have been able to get to them all. <laughs> um, as of right now, I don't think you would be able to. I currently have 26 beers on draft right now, including six seltzers. Wow. Um, and so um, we are um, crazy busy with that. We've been taking the off season and just stockpiling um, our loggers. We've been brewed a lot of loggers uh, to take advantage of that time frame, And that way they're coming out. But we right now, we have 26 beers on draft ready to go. Um, and through the season as we pick up and our business levels pick up that that number will definitely deflate um and, and i won't be able to brag about having 26 beers on draft anymore well, um but uh well, i definitely is, expect to stay around 15. for for jeremy listen you talked about a team meeting it, it can't be a day event it needs to be a week-long event <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> i don't know i'm a professional i could probably get through 10 to 18 no. in one day <laughs> well, that's right. You're, 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 you've got the health concerns you're drinking towards. So that's right. You got to fight cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris. Yeah, I was gonna say because I thought it was a good segue. So, so you have 26 you've done now. One thing I find interesting about Beer Chase because Gladwin has been dominated. We had a brewery, the Old Dominion Brewery. Those guys mm -hmm. spread out, started a lot of places around the area, and that's one reason mm -hmm. why Loudon is so dense compared to Fairfax. Um, but you brought in a specialist, didn't you bring in, you brought your brewmaster from Harpoon? Uh, he spent some time in Harpoon. Uh, we actually brought him out from his last uh, 10 years before we got him. He was in uh, Colorado and Wyoming. Yeah. Um, and, so he's another Colorado uh, guy like you. Yep. Yep. Didn't know each other then, but uh, unfortunately, but uh, that would make it a lot easier. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah so we got him out there and that's one thing is we want our the ownership wanted to um when they pulled us all together they wanted to bring in the best of the best and i really think we did that with charles he was um absolutely a phenomenal brewer so far we've won two medals at gold uh great american beer fest already with his beer um we came in gold our first time ever entering any beer with our oktoberfest marzen um it is absolutely phenomenal um and then the we also just last last year we came in sil came in second and silver with our colch and so um really really uh nailed it with the park out of there um i know a lot of the dominion guys they are absolutely phenomenal brewers as well um most of them are all tied up in either their own establishments or what work they're working on and so the but and so the ownership wanted to take that and um, go forward with bringing the best uh, individuals for what they wanted to develop. Um, and what they wanted to develop, they had no idea, but they just wanted the mm -hmm. best people to figure that out. I mean, you, you have a New England IPA. It's like Redditch Goats. Who's the, which one? You know which one that is? The Ghost? <laughs> Absolutely. Gertrude's Gert Gert Ghost. There you go. Um, see, I yeah, knew we would so... I was drinking at <laughs> we... the time, Jeremy. <laughs> That is uh, an absolutely delicious uh, New England. Um, and so that was actually Charles's first time ever making a New England. Um, oh, really? And so he's a very traditional brewer. Um, and the New Englands are a new fad, new st style. Um, a fad not, not going to, it's not going away anytime soon. I apologize uh, for any beer nerd that's yelling at me right now saying it's not a fad. I, I, I understand. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, he just wasn't real familiar with that. And so this was his kind of first stab at kind of making a new england i think he had nailed it out of the park oh it was, um, it's awesome and it's it's a fantastic yeah. beer yeah it's, yep. it's and so there's a story behind the name too uh so again we live on we're on 40 uh, 35 acres of, of land and gertrude is actually the ghost of the property um and we named a beer after her to try to have her uh, stop messing with me all the time um <laughs> and overall it's worked 
Um, and uh, so she still pops her head around every once in a while, but uh, she's stopped changing channels on TVs for me and turning TVs off, um, which has been great. Um, and so we uh, um, definitely we that are the we love that I love that beer because she's uh, she's playing along. It's it's a great beer. It's wow. a great so so you got these beers and and so I want to switch a little bit because you, you you're in hospitality right you understand mm-hmm. you know you got to take care of people so these flights of beers really popular right you get a rack of these suckers and, and the flights of beers and everything like that and you just talk about twenty six beers being on tap um, I mean what's the style of of making it an enjoyable afternoon do you guys do I mean pairings or i noticed we have taco tuesday and trivia night all of a sudden so yes so how's the technique of um enjoying the beer and how do you transition from just having a fun time to actually appreciating what you're drinking um i really think it's setting the environment um and we set an environment that you can relax in um uh, i think i've had conversations with a lot of different breweries um big and small and they you know their average guest is there for two hours mine are around for four hours so i need to figure out ways to entertain them for that long so they're still safely consuming alcohol and uh spending money by whether it's buying tacos or buying a pizza buying a pretzel um and so we we create an environment that is friendly and uh safe and family friendly uh people can bring their dogs we have tons of dogs that come out we have tons of kids that come out um and people bring their families out this is uh chris is something else we can tell them about Loudoun county and how much families come to breweries versus it's- anywhere else that i've ever been um but we made it a place that's acceptable and safe and so they want to come um and we just we don't tolerate um people that don't know how to behave that's true that's true but four hours i didn't know that i mean so it's a four hour event three to four yeah i mean if you're coming out from dc you're driving us to come to us you're driving out there for um you know right uh an hour and a half sometimes with traffic and so that's how far we are outside of dc but they will come out that way and they were gonna make a day out of it enjoy the view sit on the yard um sit by a fire pit um and kind of really enjoy it so i, I want to go go back take a take a twist in the conversation and i am a, a i am a consummate consumer okay i love beer alcohol but i know nothing about it what is a hop <laughs> what is a hop and why what you know what do the different hops do and how does, we, how does that's water excellent Jeremy. Let's, let's go back to one-on-one, Chris. So <laughs> Jerry and I, and even Al, we like to drink it. But to tell you the truth, besides knowing how to actually open the can, that's where our knowledge kind of stops. So we, we go into the hops. What's a Stritra hop versus a who knows what hops? And let's start with that first one. That's a great question. <laughs> All right. So there's four ingredients in beer. Um, I'm going to give you a very, very high level of it. And uh uh, that way I don't get misquoted and have people yell at me for saying something I shouldn't say, but real high level, there's four ingredients, uh, water, hops, yeast, and malt, uh, barley. And so, um, with those four ingredients, you are able to, uh, malt the barley and enjoy it, seep that, get these extra, the sugars out of that. Then it goes in, then you add the hops or the, those mostly is all flavoring. And so you were able to do that. Um, then the yeast comes in at the very end. You add the yeast in, and um, that is what actually creates the alcohol in the beer. The yeast will actually eat the sugars that it came out of the grain, and they will turn that into um, alcohol. Well, like I said, yeast. very, 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 very high level there. Uh, and <laughs> we can real quick, like, don't know how long we actually have for all this to talk about that. So, uh, but for as far as hops go. Um, and the many, many different flavors and style uh, names of hops, uh, they are all, it is, um, it's hops are the flavor and they, it is, there's so many different ones. Um, Citra, you find that in a lot of IPAs because the, it's so robust. Um, and then you find uh, there are um, like Nugget and um, Cascade that are a little bit more mellow that you can utilize in versatile and have in many different ways. Um, and so, with different beers, you can add multiple different hops, um, and that changes the complexity of that beer. 
And so, and same with the, the rice, or the rice, the uh, um, the grain, it will complement the grain on that as, aspect as well. Um, and to really, uh, if you, so you, the Guinness has almost zero hop flavors. And so they use, there is hop in there, but it's using a very mellow hop. And then versus this New England, or I'm sorry, this uh, West Coast that I have here, it is using a very pungent hop and not using a lot of the grain. And so that's the darker beer versus lighter beer, how much the, the charredness of the grain. Um, and I'm very out of order here as well. Um, <laughs> but the charredness of the grain depends of the, the, the color of the beer that would, would be referred to as SRM. And then um, is the darker that is, the, high, the higher number that is. Um, and then same with the, um, for hops, the number is, or the, the abbreviation is I've used, international bittering units. And the yeah. higher that number is, the stronger that is. Um, and well, this beer, I think we're around 62, I think, for my IPA. And then Guinness is going to be somewhere around two. Now, I understand, just like my favorite distillery here in Texas and Austin, Tito's, right? They make mm -hmm. their vodka yeah. from yellow corn as opposed what? to... That's Texas beer. That's as, Texas opposed, beer. as opposed to wheat, I mean, or potatoes, mm -hmm. right? And for you guys, I know that there are many beers out there that don't use hops, and they'll use wheat as an example. Is that something you guys have explored with your brewmaster? They still use hops. They're they always going to use hops. Yes. Um, and so it, the grain, it, the wheat will replace the, the grain. The, like, and so the, like, and the rice will replace the grain. And so, yeah. but they, every beer has to have those four ingredients, hop, malt, water, and yeast. Okay. Without that, you can't make a beer. Got it. And that's a, well, seltzer doesn't have those ingredients. And so I'm still trying to figure out how it's a, a classified as a beer, but the government says it's a beer. So we go they with put, it. They put it in a can. It's <laughs> similarity. Yeah. Um, and so. <laughs> Um, but the classification of beer and, and up until they realize, um, if you go back to the German impurity laws, if you really, uh, until they realized what yeast was, they said that you're only allowed to have the three ingredients, uh, water, grain, and hops. And you weren't allowed. It was, it was illegal and to actually add coriander or, uh, any other flavoring or a berry or anything else. You couldn't have blueberry. Two. I mean, what are they going to do for a Boston Red Sox game? <laughs> not allowed in Germany. Oh, well, I mean, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> so, I mean, talk about I that. Is, are you are you an Avalanche fan? Would or did you become a Caps fan? Uh, notice the, well, notice the uh, the hat he's wearing before you answer. That Mr. Knights, he's a Knights fan. He's Knights, a Knights and okay. a Kings. Um, well, I, he's safe with me because I have zero knowledge of hockey. Um, I lived in Arizona, and I when I moved to Colorado, I found out. That was, there was a strike that just ended and everyone was very, very excited that hockey was back. And I never under, it took me like a while to understand why everyone was excited because there wasn't hockey for a couple of years. And the coyotes. What are, <laughs> That's come on now. <laughs> I mean, in the middle of the desert. No, there's, they don't No, And so All right. All right. I don't know anything do about hockey. I'm, okay, a, okay. I'm, a, I'm a diehard Yankee fan. And I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. Ooh. Well, yeah. that ends our conversation. There's that thing <laughs> gone. And I didn't even have to bring that up, guys. All right, so another question. On yeah. the farm, do you grow any of those ingredients that you put in your beer? Yes, we actually are growing hops. Uh, we are a very young brewery still. So we actually planted our hops in two, early 2018. And so they're still maturing and growing. Um, they don't have their, they produced a little bit last year and we actually were able to make our very first beer off of that last year. Excuse me. Um, and so um, that was the first time we were able to do anything. And hopefully this year we our yield is a little bit stronger and we can do a bigger batch of it. Our, our eventual hope is that we can do a, um, a wet hop beer from our own product. Um, due to well, the way that hops are grown and the way they need to be um there's it's really hard to basically we need to pelletize we need to produce enough beer hops to pelletize that and then be able to keep it for future use otherwise it's a very it's a fresh product and so um it is something that needs to be done very quickly when they come off the vine and, and, and that's and, what, and al this is a big issue in virginia so virginia tech and and chris you can 
give them a mm-hmm. call. I'll introduce you to them. Um, they're very interested in being able to produce better hops in Virginia. Yes. It's an issue yeah, because are. of the weather. This is not a hops area. So no, most of the most, just like our our wines, most of the hops are actually produced outside of the state and brought in as an yes. ingredient, not grown here. Right. The about, only thing we grow are politicians. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what about using like greenhouses or some sort of weather barrier to grow your hops, like an indoor grow? So there are. Um, there's actually uh, um, speaking of Virginia Tech. Uh, Virginia Tech is very active in the hop uh, growth and development. And I, I, I don't know anyone there. I know um, someone that's in the Hop Association of Blount County, and she is very active in Virginia Tech. That's how I know there's a corre- correlation there. Um, and so they are, she, I know, I think, believe she does have a little bit in her greenhouse. Um, and uh, then there's, but everyone else right now is, is grows it during the season and then comes down. But no one has a big giant fields right now in Lowney County. And so that's what we're trying to figure out how big of a field it needs. And then, but the, the other problem is with, if you have that, then you also need the, the pelletizer and to be able to get a pelletizer. And basically that way the hops are going to be able to grow, uh, be grown and utilized past the first few weeks or first few days of it coming off the vine. So as soon as it comes off the vine, you need to go into a pelletizer, makes a little pellet, looks like a, basically it looks like rabbit food. Um, it's the easiest way to explain what the pellet, pelletized hops looks like, but it's just compressed and it, it, you can freeze them and it saves it a lot, lot better in, um, for, for beer. Um, if you use the whole cone, it would be, it's great, but it's just hard to get that fresh. So when you bring in a brewmeister, cause you're, you're talking about something it's kind of interesting to me. I mean, Jeremy, you find that kind of interesting? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm a nerd. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, is the, Brewmeister mostly like a chef and does he get involved with the ingredients or I mean is this a business that requires a team no it's I mean so the the brewmaster our brewmaster Charles is uh um he knows the sources that they he wants to get his beer his hops from um and then uh, any new ones we always do get sample batches out see what they bring out smell them Big thing, I think everyone's seen Jim Coke and his commercials. Uh, if you guys don't know who Jim Coke is, he's the founder of uh, Boston Beer. Um, and he'll be standing in this front of this giant pile of hop yellow, or green things, and then he dives into it and takes a fistful of it, um, just like smells it. To do that, it, it's uh, you have to be Jim Coke to be able to do that. But uh, he, uh, um, so we'll get the pelletized version and kind of smell it as well and make sure that it's you know this what we expect and then if we, as long as the the like so we, we've been buying from the same source for a while um and so he's been he has those relationships with um his vendors to be able to get that product um and if it's a, we've gone we've used a for yeast example our vendor for that we we had a mistake and we didn't like the response um i'm not going to name any names of of the vendor of that and we change it now and we've worked with the new um, vendor to make sure that we have the product that we like. So with COVID, have you had supply issues? Um, at the very beginning, we were having issues with uh, can products. Um, and mm-hmm. that was as far as the canning the individuals itself and then also the crowlers. Crowlers are a 32 ounce can um, that we actually seal on property per order. Um, and so we were having a little bit of issue getting those. And so um, luckily uh, we were able to stockpile a little bit to get us through. Um, I was able to buy in big enough quantities to kind of get it to us. Um, and we were, get us through those times that were a little crunched on that. Now I'm curious, pre COVID, I would imagine would be your peak, uh, in terms of total gallons brewed. Is that how you, you measure as gallons in terms of the, the total brewing that you do, or how was that measured? And, and what was your peak? Uh, we actually measured it in, uh, barrels, uh, barrel is 31 gallons. Okay. Um, and so we measure in barrels. Uh, we our brew house is a 10 barrel brew house, so we can brew uh, 10 barrels at a time. We have fermenters up to 30 barrels, um, and then our bright tanks are 20 up to 20. And so um, as far as uh, 20, we actually grew in production in t- during COVID. Um, and so demand was still there, especially post-quarantine. So we actually, our, our numbers have gone up. We're, we're only 
we opened our doors in September of 18. And so we only had all the 19 to do a full year and our numbers went up from 19 to 20. Wow. Okay. Well, that's terrific. So we're back to this one one thing because Jeremy and I, listen, we, we, haven't, <laughs> we, we haven't got the stupid out of us just yet. So, um, or if I confuse you that much that you have more no, questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So you brought up, you know, you brought up two, two, and I'm going to get back to the IBUs and the, the S, uh, SRMs. Um, but one of the things I've always been interested in is ale versus lager in this refrigeration conversation. What is that okay. when, when you name a beer? So an ale versus lager is the yeast. Um, it all goes back to the yeast that you use. So you can either use ale yeast or you can use lager yeast. And just like hops and just like the grain, there are thousands of different variations and thousands of different ways you can do it. Um, and so um, ye- the lager yeast is cold fermentation. So you have to keep it at a certain temperature. Um, it's below a certain temperature. And uh, that's why Coors Silver Bullet is always ice cold because it is a lager and it needs to be kept cold. Um, and then you have um, ales that is, uh, it's a, a little bit warmer of temp- temperature of what for the brewing, um, for the fermentation. And so it's the, that's really the big difference is, is the yeast itself and the flavors. And then you have the different flavors that the yeast, all the yeast will impart. Interesting. How, how so important what, is water and the quality of the water to the process? Um, like you're from Colorado, now you're in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a difference there? Thousand, it is the biggest, most important thing in the world, in our world. Um, and so um, the quality of the water is 100% depending of what the beer is going to come out. So you can take the, um, say, course, for example, since we already taught, brought, I already brought them up once. Uh, you can take that recipe and they have little satellite breweries throughout the United States to brew all this. They actually have to change the water um the science behind the water what's that the filtration so 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 are you well water not even not even the filtration just the minerality of it all yeah and so to match what the original was and that way because if you didn't you would be able to be like all right wow that's coming from cincinnati that one's coming from texas this one like and you'd be able to see and and taste it immediately and so water is very very important and so for bear chase we're actually on a being a farm we're on a well system and so we actually get all of our water from our own property. So how deep is and your well? Just out of curiosity. Uh, beyond a mountain, we're 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 Pretty as deep. deep as they would allow. They would they're as deep as they allow us to go. I think we had about five four me feet before they said we need to start a new one. So <laughs> um, it is uh, uh, somewhere around a thousand feet, I think. Yeah, mine's yeah. eight hundred and fifty. Uh, yeah, that's, they're, 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 it's, it's crazy around here. I mean, that's the reason why I was asking is like the the well yeah. water. It's great. And the well water is awesome, by the way, guys. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't tell you. I mean, I didn't know about the chemicality or whatever of it. But, but by the way, Jeremy, that was the dumbest question that was actually smart. I really. Oh, it actually. <laughs> phenomenal question. <laughs> Makes sense. I don't I mean, know. The, the water here in California, to me, if you get it out of the tap or even some of the streams, everything tastes like chlorine. Mm. Right. So as a California yeah. brewer, you've got to do a lot of work to make that water yeah. taste not like chlorine or 100%. whatever crap is in there. Yeah, yeah. here in yep. Texas, we exactly. have a lot of aquifers underneath our property. So, for example, we've got a very pure water from our well for our home mm-hmm. at maybe just 300 feet. Yeah, yep. but, the, but, but he's right. I mean, that's interesting. The taste is, is, is crazy. I didn't really think about the water as being such a significant kind of it, aspect. It, is is, yeah, he, is the pH of the water the? Chris, we're, we're, we're done talking to you. We're, we're we're the three of us are now talking about water. Okay, <laughs> excellent, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here. I'm just going to sit here and drink then. Uh, cheers. <laughs> no, no. So, so actually, the legitimate question is that: is, Does your water have to be a certain pH for the beer to come out right? And is the pH different between beers? Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say the water, the pH between beers is different, um, but the pH, yes, is very important. It um, really balances out. It, again, it goes back to all the little minerals, everything about water, um, the city, like not this, but the pH balance, the the mineral complexity of it all, everything that, that you put into the water that's there, um, th- if it's chlorinated, if it's, um, and so a lot of city breweries have to figure out how to dechlorinate their water before they can start brewing with it. 
um, if it's hard water, if it's soft water, all those little things really do play a factor into it. Um, and if you brew the beer right, you can you can complement the water right. Um, but I wouldn't say they. It, I don't think many breweries change it in between beers and styles. Um, once they find that mint, that water they uh, that they like the style of water they like, they'll keep it that across the board on all their beer. All right, I got one more question, and I'll let them talk. Um, <laughs> IPA, double IPA, triple IPA, quadruple IPA. What the f- is the difference between that? Alcohol besides levels. the the crazy like harshness yeah. of the taste. Alcohol well, levels. It's, Absolutely right. It's, yeah, it's the only thing is the alcohol levels, not the harshness of. The, I've had triple IPAs that are smoother than a regular IPA. I've had three of them. I stand up. I'm like, what the hell happened? Um, and when, <laughs> and so um, because I was like, I only had three beers, but and it was drinking like a four percenter, and it's eleven and a half. Um, and so, but yeah, the the percentage is all based. So it goes from a session IPA to all the way to a triple IPA. I think I've heard of a quadruple IPA. I don't, I don't know if I've actually ever had one. Um, I don't even know if it's a true style, to be honest. Um, but I know the triple, triple, the triple is a new, the triple is a new one. Um, yeah. yeah the, I don't know if it's cr- if the quadruple is official style. Yeah. I've not. never heard of quadruple. Triple I, is a one. I've got one in my fridge. I've got one in my fridge. Yeah. A quadruple. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's good. Is, like, is it called uh, Tito's? I'm afraid of it. Actually. I don't want to <laughs> drink it. My brother-in-law gave it to me. <laughs> Can I ask what the percentage on that is? Yeah, uh, you can. I just unfortunately couldn't tell you without getting up and going. Getting I, I'm looking. I'm looking <laughs> at some quad IPA stuff on RateBeer.com, right? And I see some of these uh, these rating at 14 percent, right? 12 percent, 17 percent, 15 percent. I think actually Dogfish Head might oh, have yeah. one that they do like it's a it's a special release and it's like super expensive. That's so like 25 dollars for one can of it. Well, they, well, they, I mean, they have, you're probably referring to their 120, 120 yes. is 18% alcohol. That's their triple IPA. So they have the 60, the 90 and the 120. Yeah. Um, and that uh, goes back to the hop question. That is all the number is all about how much or in how fast they're adding hops. So 60 minute, they're doing it for 60 minutes. 90 minutes is 90 minutes and 120. They're doing adding hops for 120 minutes. Um, into the brew process, which is huge. And, but yes, that is, uh, um, I think I usually see 20 ish dollars for about eight ounces to 10 ounces. It's so, good though. wow. So they've got this brew dog hop shot <laughs> that, and, and, and it goes on to say that it's 22%. That's not beer anymore. That's right. It's okay. Coffee. That's they, call it, they, they, they call it a grenade in a 110 milliliter bottle. <laughs> hey, you yeah. know what? You know what, Al? At, at four hours of drinking, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, the, uh, the the strongest beer I've ever been able to, f- I have not tried it yet because I, it's not made right now, but at the highest, the most alcoholic beer is about 67% alcohol. <gasps> what? Okay. Yeah. How does that work? <laughs> it, I don't know. <laughs> To be honest, I want I would I want to try it, but I I have no idea. That's good for uh, yeah. The uh, um, I think Scotland is the brewery. It's somewhere in Scotland. They made it. Um, and are, are yeah, they confusing yeah. you know pure grain alcohol scotch. with with, yeah. with, uh, scotch. with beer? <laughs> scotch, scotch with beer. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. so what what is Bear Mountain's uh, most popular beer? for men uh well i'm gonna, wow. I'm, gonna correct you, I'm gonna correct you on our name real quick oh sorry <laughs> bear chase, bear chase. I, I've had um, a, that was a 32 ouncer and i'm on my second one no bear, bear chase, bear chase. <laughs> um, bear chase. <laughs> no uh the our so our most popular beer is actually it's called mr blonde um and it is a 4.5 percent blonde ale and it is extremely approachable, well balanced, easy drinking, and when you're sitting there for four hours, you can drink it for all day long. Um, nice. So is that, yeah, is that yeah. is, is, do do men and women gravitate towards that, or is that oh, absolutely, mostly, yeah. yeah, you know, no, I, I think you find, I, you find I, that men and women have different tastes. 
do one gravitate more towards uh -huh. You're setting IPAs me up here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you are setting me up. No, absolutely not. Um, I know a ton of ladies that can drink out drink the with IPAs and all that nonsense. I know a ton of dudes that won't touch an IPA. Um, I know a ton of dudes that can't stand dark beers. I know a lot of chicks that and I'm, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, uh, as gender friendly as I can with my dudes and chicks. So I apologize. Pete said it all this for me. Right. Um, <laughs> no, but, uh, the, uh, females, uh, I do not classify it as a certain style of beer with, with male or female. Um, I really believe that the, uh, gender has nothing to do with your style of beer. Equal but you are seeing like, alcoholics. <laughs> but you know, wait, wait, wait. This, this is a good point, Jeremy. Though you hit it, kind of the thing is, is that uh, Chris. Uh, one thing I noticed in Northern Virginia's breweries is they're beginning to serve wine in. Now you talked about salsers and hard alcohol, you know, hard ciders. Um, and no hard cider is really popular, like in Australia and parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. um, are you seeing? that as as a mainstream piece or are you just seeing it as yes. okay you got one person that refuses to drink beer just give them this no. no i think it's definitely i mean so so much that so we started as a farm brewery um and uh we within the first year we actually became a farm brewery winery as well um and so we are able to serve beer wine cider and seltzers um and the and the reason we do that is we see that demand the demand mm -hmm. is there that people want to enjoy themselves and um, whether it's a seltzer, um, a glass of wine or cider because they can't have gluten, we wanted to have those offerings for them. And so um, beer is still majority of my sales as a whole, but uh, the wine and cider segment is huge. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I actually bring in a cider from a local uh, vineyard, um, Corcoran Brewery, Corcoran Vineyards, and I'm selling like hotcakes uh, in a 16 ounce bottle. Um, yeah. And so uh, it's a very easy drinking cider. And then we also have um, Bold Rock, which is a um, Virginia uh, cidery as well down in Charlottesville. Um, and we have them on draft. And I, my rep told me that I'm, I have, I'm buying more of that than anyone else that he's been selling to. He's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of weird. I mean, it, as my other bros here on Virginians, um, Virginia is really big in apples, guys. Uh, we spend a lot of money. Yes designing apples our apples are crazy good and um yeah i mean we, we we're trying to get Best better on hops yeah there's a lot mm -hmm. of money in the apples world we have apple wine around here dudes um yes. northgate makes a great apple wine um so but but you know since we're kind of a little off the the beer conversation for a moment I, mm -hmm. you want to talk about all the dogs you have you are the most dog friendly place I have been. <laughs> like you have an ice cream truck that will serve dog treats and no ice oh, cream. Oh, you've been out for that one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's crazy, guys. The dogs know what's happening, not the humans. The, the, <laughs> the, this dog no. truck shows up and the dogs go running towards it like the dog truck's here. The there dog truck's here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we are very friendly. Um, and this is my this is my oldest uh, Samson. And uh, we love dogs. He is a uh, golden here, and but he is absolutely the reason we are all about what um, it is. We again, we are on outside acreage. We have tons of space. We want to um, have well-behaved, on leash dogs come out and enjoy it. They uh, they like to be out in the public just as much as everyone else, getting cooped up in their houses, all that fun stuff. They want to come out as well. Um, and so people love their dogs. Um, and like I said, we are a brewery that is, a, a, we're here for the people. Um, and, uh, if the guests want to bring the dogs as, like you said, on the leash and it's well behaved all day long. Dude, you guys and are so, the best. I mean, you, I can't tell you, I was at a winery, they have them in a pen and I'm like, Oh my God, you, you go down <laughs> the street because you guys, I mean, they're everywhere. I, and I don't be sure. No, first of all, the dogs are very well behaved, even the ones off the leash that are running around. Um, and there's a lot of listen. It, it it's it's like one of those songs. There's frisbee shooting around and footballs. Um, yep. It is friendly, guy. I mean, this is Al, Jeremy. You wouldn't believe Virginia. Oh, I, I'm, I'm it, intrigued. I'm like going to talk to my brother-in-law who's a beer 
connoisseur and we're going to make a trip because you just uh, come out here you just come out you got, here you, you got a place to, slay, to stay and 14 100, people 100 yeah. feet from the brewery i mean i can't yep. get any better than that that's like heaven <laughs> and they got yeah and they import and, and the you, brew meister right so that this brew guy yeah. is imported from harpoon i mean uh, what it's it sounds perfect it's crazy yeah so, yep. well, yeah. so with, with which is that, which I mean, is one more question one more question what is the what is the top selling top two selling snack foods at your uh, establishment? Pizza and have uh, those snack foods been growing because you guys were like yes. it was always get the pretzel and the cheese and now like how big is your menu now? It's crazy. So uh, being an agriculture business, we are limited to what we're actually able to produce at the brewery itself, um, and so we are able to do basically heat and serve um rules and our regulations now i'm sorry i called my dog over now he's all wants to do is be pet so that's okay. now i need to fight that um but so um we were very we're limited in what we we're able to produce and so um we do uh pizzas and pretzels so we actually partner with a local pizza joint and called tacos pizza. well that's that's on our that's on at eats food truck so uh, okay, the okay. brewery itself is uh just pizzas and pretzels Okay. Um, and we, so, but I sell a ton of pretzels. They are absolutely delicious. Um, and so I highly recommend it to anyone that's coming out to bear chase, grab a pretzel, grab the cheese dip. I'm not just saying, I honestly, I honestly, it is, it's awesome. In it, it is awesome. But, Jeremy. You just come over here. You'll get it in your yeah. beard. You'll be, don't worry. Oh, yeah. about it. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely delicious. Everyone loves them. Um, and so outside of beer, I think I'm known for my pretzel. Yes. Um, and so, which is crazy. Um, during quarantine, um, I actually had to continue to ordering the pretzels because people were stopping by just to get the pretzel, not wow. buying beer. They were just buying pretzels. I didn't understand it. Um, and so um, that is my number one selling item um, out of outside of beer. Wow. Um, and so uh, I think it was I think I sold thirty three thousand pretzels last year alone. Wow. Uh, yeah. I could eat that many. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm drinking the low calorie yeah. IPAs now because of all the snack foods. The, and there's got to be some kind of health hook on them pretzels too, right? <laughs> uh, no. It's yeah. the opposite. Oh. Gluten will kill you. <laughs> yeah. But it's got cheese. And I introduced my one golden eye, or I, this is my other one here. So. Oh my gosh. Love them. I've got five. Yeah. So. You got five? Oh, wow. I don't know if I can do five. Yeah, All right, guys. Well, we're listening. We're, we're hitting the top of the hour now, and I, I think that uh, we should start wrapping it up. I really don't think we should, Al. I, I know that you're only doing this because you have a steak that's waiting yeah. for you. Well, not just yeah. a steak. It's a New York steak that's about two inches thick being barbecued, medium rare, with, with a holy shit spicing on it. Mm. What part of Texas are you in from, Dal? Uh, Central Texas. All right. It, it doesn't have a name. It, Chris, it, it doesn't have a name. We're doing it doesn't. Grilled, grilled asparagus and grilled mushrooms. Hey, you're in Texas, so it's all matters. 